happy to have Koichi talking about uh, MHD from QED. Koichi, please go ahead. Yeah, okay. Thank you, Fong, for the uh, introduction. And I also thank organizers for this opportunity. So um, today I address a very simple question. So that is how we can get MHD from QED. So this uh, talk is uh, based on a work with uh, Masaru, uh, which uh, we submitted uh, this year. And I also uh, partially addressed uh, our uh, previous paper with Yuji Hirono and Hong and Ian. Um, sorry, this should be 17. Okay. Um, yeah, so uh, um, I suppose uh, most of the participants are um, expert of hydrodynamics uh, in this workshop. But I just want to remind you what would be uh, hydrodynamics in theoretical perspective. So um, we consider constructing a low energy effective theory of a given system, and especially in the presence of magnetic field in the, in the present case. But generally, we can consider low energy effective theory. And first, we need to identify the relevant degrees of freedom in the low energy regime. That should be a gapless modes like this which can be excited with an infinitesimally small uh, amount of energy. Uh, so in the coordinate space, they are conserved charges, uh, which survive in a uh, long space time scale. So uh, hydrodynamics can be constructed based on the symmetry of the system and the equation of motion composed of a set of conservation laws. Uh, I think this should be okay. So uh, therefore, uh, hydrodynamics can be regarded as a universal uh, low energy effective theory, effective field theory on the basis of the symmetry of the system. Uh, so keeping this in mind, uh, I want to point out the basic issue in the conventional formulation of the magnetohydrodynamics. So if you open some famous textbooks, um, the also start with the, these equations. So of course, this is a conservation law for T mu nu, but only for matter field. And actually there's a right-hand side, non-zero right-hand side. So this is a Joule heat term and Lorentz force term. And this is of course Maxwell equation. And there's again, uh, non-zero right-hand side. This is a current. Uh, so this current induces um, electromagnetic field. So actually this formulation or conventional formulation is based on the non-conservation laws, uh, which have a non-zero right-hand side. So this implies that the, these equations contains gap mode, uh, which is redundant degrees of freedom in the low energy regime. So this uh, formulation does not match the concept of hydrodynamics, which I uh, mentioned in the previous slide. So we want to reconsider the formulation of relativistic MHD in the following. So uh, first of all, we need to identify uh, hydrodynamic variable or conserved charges. So without electromagnetic field, there should be energy density and flow velocity. And co <clears throat> corresponding conservation laws, of course, um, conservation of T mu nu, uh, which is associated with transformation symmetry of the system. Now uh, we want to include electromagnetism. So we would have E or uh, B or E and B. And uh, we have corresponding equation motion. But actually, as you know, electric field is screened by a static charge distribution that is called thereby screening effect. So electric field actually does not survive in equilibrium system. On the other hand, um, static charge distribution does not screen the magnetic field. So the basic reason is there's no uh, magnetic Coulomb field without the magnetic monopole. So a magnetic field can survive even in medium or in equilibrium system. So we need to include magnetic field, but we do not need to include electric field as a hydro variable. So uh, the set of our MHD variable is um, given here and corresponding equation motion is uh, Bianchi identity, Bianchi identity. And since we don't need to include electric field as a uh, basic uh, variable, we don't need to include a Maxwell equation, the other set of Maxwell equation as a 
basic equation. So this equation describes time derivative of electric field. But this does not mean electric field is not relevant in MHD, but electric field is induced by the dynamics of uh, hydro variables. So our hydro variable here. So that implies that electric field should be uh, given as a function of uh, our MHD variable. And also uh, current can be uh, obtained from uh, this equation as a function of our hydro variable. Okay, so uh, we will derive a constitutive equation for electric field and, and the current in the following. And at this stage, I want to mention that the Bianchi identity is actually conservation law of uh, magnetic lines. So this still implies that there's a, a corresponding symmetry of the system. Okay, now um, there are several paths to reach uh, hydrodynamics, formulation of hydrodynamics. So there are two representative uh, uh, formulation. So first, I uh, want to address the macroscopic formulation based on the second law of hydrodynamics. So this is called entropy current analysis, uh, which I assume uh, most of participants are familiar with. So uh, it's nice to start with the simplest analysis. And uh, in, in the second part, I um, extend our discussion to the microscopic formulation based on uh, non-equilibrium statistical method. So this part is a uh, main subject of this talk. And uh, then uh, we discuss how we can get MHD from uh, uh, QED. Okay, so uh, this is the zeroth order um, entropy current analysis. So you can write down all possible tensor structures for T mu nu and F tilde mu nu. The difference from usual case is that we have magnetic field here. So uh, we should have uh, this kind of additional tensor structure. And uh, at this moment, we don't know what uh, uh, coefficient x, y, and z are. So uh, we compute the divergence of entropy current and the require it vanishes identically at the zero order in derivative. So this constitute ideal MHD. And uh, this constraint gives you uh, this uh, constitutive equation at the zero order. And the Z is found to be one. So, so this constraint gives you one. And here, epsilon and P are total uh, energy and pressure. Um, Okay, and if we assume the separation between matter part and the magnetic part and the magnetization potential, then we can reproduce the conventional result. Uh, that is the uh, matter part plus a Maxwell tensor at equal to zero. So the equivalence to the conventional formulation can be checked uh, with uh, some arrangement. So if you uh, eliminate this current by using Maxwell equation, and actually, this right hand side is uh, same as uh, divergence of Maxwell tensor. Uh, that should be known in uh, classical electrodynamics. So, so in this limit, uh, where we assume the separation, then we can have the, we can find the equivalence. However, this separation between the matter and electromagnetic part is not necessary at all in the formulation of hydrodynamics. The hydrodynamics does not care such a details of system. So uh, there should be a more universal uh, formulation of MHD. And the even uh, this separation may not be possible for a strongly coupled system where uh, the excitation is a mixture of matter and electromagnetic field. And also uh, what the translation symmetry of the system tells us is the conservation of total energy and the momentum. So we should not uh, separate the uh, uh, matter part and the uh, magnetic field part in the basic derivation of the MHD. Okay, now uh, we proceed to the first order constitutive equation. So we include first order derivative term like this and like this. Uh, so for the later use, we just uh, write in this form, but we can say that this is uh, F two the mu nu one. So this is just first order term. And we 
try to constrain the possible tensor structures for these uh, cor uh, derivative corrections. So again, we compute the divergence of entropy current and we find non-zero um, expression on the right-hand side. And we want to ensure that this, uh, this right-hand side is always semi-positive. So this can be ensured if we can make uh, this kind of bilinear form. For example, this is for uh, second term. Okay, and this is for uh, second rank tensor. So this might have more complicated form. But first we can uh, consider this uh, simpler case like this. Uh, so X should be uh, given by available vectors and tensors. So basically we can have metric and epsilon tensor and U and B. So B is a direction of magnetic field and this part is transverse to B and this is transverse to uh, also B. And we, if we have unknown coefficient sigma here at this moment. And now uh, we can get the constitutive equation of electric field by using inverse of uh, matrix X. So this X times E uh, should have this form. So if you multiply uh, inverse of X, we can get the constitutive equation for electric field. And also uh, we can get the uh, constitutive equation for uh, current like this. And here we use Max equation. So this equation gives you a relation between uh, current and uh, electromagnetic field. And now uh, we clearly see that this unknown coefficient uh, actually uh, conductivity. So this is only conductivity around magnetic field and perpendicular to magnetic field. And this is a whole conductivity. And I don't have time to um, uh, show you the detailed analysis for Kara MHD, but uh, in this paper, we have done analysis for Kara MHD. And we found that the color magnetic effect uh, should be should present in the um, uh, MHD if one includes the actual charge, uh, actual charge dynamics, and we do uh, the entropy current analysis. So MHD, uh, sorry, uh, uh, CME is uh, basically required by uh, entropy current analysis. And for viscous term, uh, the tensor structure is a little bit more complicated. So I don't want to write down explicit forms, but you can uh, guess the result of the tensor decomposition. So without magnetic field, we have only two coefficients. This is shear um, viscosity and this is bulk viscosity. So this is basically a trace rest part and this is trace part of T mu nu. And if there is a magnetic field, then uh, spatial rotation symmetry is partially broken. So um, this coefficient should be split into two components. Uh, so parallel refers to the plane, uh, which includes directional magnetic field, and perpendicular uh, refers to the plane, uh, which does not contain uh, directional magnetic field. So we have uh, uh, four uh, viscous coefficient at this moment. And if you, again, use uh, epsilon tensor, uh, we can get the so-called whole viscosities. Again, we have uh, two components. Uh, so uh, if we have uh, uh, inhomogeneous fluid, uh, fluid flow, uh, then uh, Lorentz force will be also inhomogeneous. So inhomogeneous force uh, will induce uh, the deformation of fluid cell. So this a deformation is captured by uh, whole viscosities. And actually there's one more uh, viscosity. So what it will be, um, in usual case, uh, bulk viscosity means response of uh, uh, pressure with respect to expansion. So in the presence of magnetic field, we can consider uh, expansion along magnetic field and see the response of pressure in the same direction. But here we can also see the expansion along magnetic field and the response in, the, uh, in, in transverse to the magnetic field. So we can introduce uh, one more uh, 
uh, kind of bulk viscosity, so which we call cross viscosity. And the, you can also consider transverse direction, but you, here uh, you can consider transverse expansion and see the response in uh, parallel direction. So we have actually additional one, one more uh, cross viscosity. But these two processes are uh, inverse to each other. So um, they should be related by Onsaga's uh, relation. And actually they should take the same uh, value. So we can get rid of, get rid of uh, one of them and we get the seven coefficient in total. Okay, so this is a basic uh, uh, story of macroscopic derivation. And there are some lessons. So uh, first we uh, identified the gap resmos uh, where uh, magnetic field is included, but electric field is not included as a basic variable. And then uh, if we perform the entropy current analysis, uh, we get uh, many transport coefficient because of absence of full rotational symmetry. Okay, so now um, the natural question is how we can derive uh, MHD from microscopic theory. And specifically in this case, microscopic theory uh, should be given by QED. So, um, in phenological uh, derivation uh, by Randall Rishitz, we assume a low, uh, second law of thermodynamics. But for a statistical method, uh, we don't need to assume uh, a second law of thermodynamics. But actually, we can uh, prove a second law of thermodynamics within our um, within a given order of derivative ex expansion. Okay, basic framework uh, has been given by these guys, uh, Hayata, Hidaka, Nomi, and uh, Masaru. Uh, so they invented a nice framework uh, which derives hydrodynamics uh, starting from a microscopic theory. So they used a kind of uh, non-equilibrium statistical operator method, uh, which is valid even for a strong coupling theory. So uh, we, apply uh, their method to the formulation of uh, relativistic MHD. So let me first uh, briefly uh, explain their framework. So the setup of problem is for for, <coughs> is following. So suppose um, there's a given Lagrangian and we can easily identify the symmetry of the theory and get the conservation laws. So this is actually at the operator level. So at the operator level, it's easy, easy to uh, find the conservation laws like this. So uh, for notation, notational uh, simplicity, I just uh, uh, denote conservation law, uh, conserved conserve quantity as Q mu, but Q mu can be uh, T zero nu or some current or something else as well. And to get the cross set of equations, uh, we need to express the spatial component of conserved current by uh, conserved charges. So this is actually uh, uh, constitutive equations. So constitutive equations should be given in this form, in this uh, functional form. So uh, we put the assumption uh, that uh, the system is in the local equilibrium at the initial time, Ti. So at the initial time, the density operator is given in the form of a uh, local uh, Gibbs ensemble like this. So Q0 is again conserved charge and the mu uh, is a corresponding Lagrange multiplier. So this is a kind of familiar form, but it, it's a extension to the local form. So according to this assumption, uh, we can have uh, a relation between uh, spatial component and the conserved charges or some dynamic parameters like this at the initial time, because we have uh, uh, the density matrix at the initial time. And at the arbitrary time after hydrodynamic evolution or just evolution of the system, we want to evaluate uh, uh, expectation value of uh, conserved current at time t. 
However, uh, in Heisenberg picture, uh, the, the density operator does not evolve in time because this is just a state. So state uh, does not evolve in the Heisenberg picture. So the question is how we can evaluate this trace uh, at the different time uh, uh, for the operator given at the different time. So this is a question. So the flow chart is following. At the initial time, we assume uh, local gives ensemble and we can have a constitutive equation. And if you solve uh, the, uh, the hydrodynamic equations, then we can get uh, uh, conserve charges at the uh, uh, next time slice as a function of uh, uh, derivative of uh, thermodynamic parameters at the initial time. So this is fine. So we want to repeat this uh, process, this algorithm to get uh, a long time uh, evolution. However, at the next step, we actually encounter the problem. So if we want to express uh, the uh, the conserved charges at the second time slice. Uh, we don't know what uh, uh, thermodynamic parameter uh, we should defer. Because some dynamic parameter at the, uh, this time slice has not been defined or has not been given. So uh, this is thought to be a, a dead end. So the problem is the following. So in parameter space, uh, we have a set of thermodynamic parameters at the initial time, and system evolves like this to, uh, to arbitrary time. But if we stick to uh, uh, initial set of uh, thermodynamic parameters, then derivative expansion becoming worse and, for, worse, and worse in a long time scale. So instead, uh, we should actually update uh, the thermodynamic parameter, the set of thermodynamic parameter, and then uh, perform a sequence of uh, derivative expansion to reach uh, the final state. So this uh, algorithm can be implemented with uh, update condition or matching condition, where uh, lo uh, local gives ensemble at uh, uh, next time slice is given by uh, uh, conserved charges at the next time slice. So this is kind of hypothetical uh, uh, local Gibbs ensemble. So however, uh, I again emphasize that the um, density operator does not evolve in Heisenberg picture. So the question is the following. So, so initially uh, we have uh, local Gibbs ensemble. And the question is if we can express our uh, density operator at arbitrary time uh, in this form, in this factorized form with uh, local Gibbs ensemble at this time. So actually this can be done with a simple toric. So um, local Gibbs ensemble is given in this kind of uh, exponential form. So you can have, you can split uh, this S, S of Ti to S of T plus delta S. So delta S is just S of T minus S of Ti. So this is just uh, identical um, arrangement. And so S of T and delta S are, are not commuting with each other. So if, if you want to uh, factorize this exponential factors, then you, you need to introduce a kind of time ordering. But this is actually very familiar uh, toric, uh, which is seen in the transition from Heisenberg picture to interaction picture in the ordinary uh, perturbation theory. So we can um, uh, actually perform this factorization. Then what is nice is that uh, if you uh, evaluate the operator at the time t, arbitrary time t, then uh, the first order, sorry, first term in the expansion of this exponential factor is nothing but the expectation value at the local Gibbs ensemble, hypothetical local Gibbs ensemble at T. And what follow is the expansion of this exponential factor, uh, which defines kind of uh, 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 correlator uh, at, at the summary equilibrium, summary equilibrium system, hypothetical summary equilibrium system. 
So this is nice. So you can um, evaluate this uh, correlator at the summer uh, system. So um, you can get the constitutive equation in the following. So the first term is nothing but ideal hydro, ideal hydro. And what follow is uh, derivative corrections, so which is given by uh, summer, uh, summer correlators. And for this ideal part, um, actually uh, you can uh, define kind of partition function because this is a summary equivalent system, a summary uh, a hypothetical summary equivalent system. So, uh, <clears throat> so this uh, function gives you uh, all things uh, about uh, this ideal part. And uh, yeah, now a uh, temperature depends on coordinate because it's a, a local equilibrium system. So if you look at uh, um, imaginary time formalism of quantum field theory, you can have uh, a different radius uh, of uh, temporal component uh, in, in Euclidean space, uh, but it depends on the coordinate. So you can have uh, this kind of uh, curved space time, imagine curved space time. So you can give uh, uh, geometrical interpretation, interpretation of uh, uh, ideal order dynamics. So I don't have time to go into details, but you can uh, find a nice discussion in uh, Masao's paper here. And for dissipative part, uh, this correlator gives you nothing but uh, uh, Kubo formulas. So you can introduce the uh, uh, transport coefficient, which is given by summary correlator like this. So uh, this is a basic framework uh, which uh, they implemented. So uh, our question is the following. So in the beginning, we argue that electric field is screened in the equilibrium, but magnetic field is not. So because of these properties, MHD can be regarded as uh, fluid dynamics plus uh, dynamics of conserved magnetic flux. So uh, first question is um, how we can understand MHD from any symmetry of uh, underlying microscopy theory or QED uh, in short. And second, part, uh, second question is of course, um, uh, is uh, how we can support uh, MHD uh, based on the statistical method. So uh, for the first question, uh, we can identify the symmetry of, uh, MA, uh, of uh, QED. But first, uh, let's just look at the Maxwell part. So this is the Maxwell part. And this part actually have uh, a global symmetry, which is recently called one form symmetry. So if you uh, shift uh, gauge field uh, by uh, a constant uh, one form parameter theta, then uh, this uh, Maxwell part is uh, obviously invariant under this shift. And also you can uh, expect that there's corresponding uh, global symmetry in magnetic sector or dual sector uh, because of uh, electromagnetic duality in Maxwell part. And corresponding um, conservation laws uh, actually uh, Maxwell equation uh, in, in vacuum without the current. So uh, these uh, two equations uh, express the conservation of electric flux and magnetic flux. So this is uh, uh, a consequence of one form symmetry. So this is a conservation of 1D object uh, through the surface. Uh, on the other hand, conventional zero form symmetry is a uh, conservation of point-like charges in the box. So this is a kind of generalization of symmetry and conservation laws. But if we include uh, the matter part, fermion part, so this uh, covalent derivative obviously, obviously breaks uh, the electric one form symmetry. So this part is not invariant with respect to the shift of, uh, uh, of uh, uh, gauge field. So uh, uh, electric one form symmetry is explicitly broken by the current or matter part. However, magnetic one form symmetry is not broken. So uh, this Bianchi identity can be interpreted as a consequence of uh, magnetic one-form symmetry. 
So here's the uh, answer to the first question. So MHD can be still understood as a dynamic. So cones of charges uh, associated with uh, generalized global symmetry or more specifically magnetic one form symmetry of QED, uh, which is inherent in the QED. Okay. And for the second question, so uh, we uh, reproduced the same tensor structures as uh, phenomenological derivation, which I mentioned in the first part of this talk. And uh, we can clarify the relation uh, between uh, these constitutive equations, so uh, more specifically this coefficient to the partition function. So this is partition function gives a bridge between the microscopic and the macroscopic uh, uh, theories. And for a dissipative part or first order in derivative, uh, we can again reproduce the same tensor structures as a phenomenological derivation. But the advantage of uh, statistical method is that we can verify the second row, uh, second, uh, sorry, uh, thermodynamic inequalities. So this part is uh, based on uh, a general inequality for uh, this correlator. So if you take a correlator for the same operator, actually this correlator takes the semi-positive value. And because of this uh, general property, we can derive inequalities for a transport coefficient. So we have five inequalities. And uh, according to definition of entropy, microscopic derivation, sorry, microscopic definition of entropy, we can also uh, verify uh, the second law of thermodynamics uh, within the first order in derivative. Okay. And uh, this is a kind of appendix. So uh, I want to compare our inequality with uh, some others in the literature. So there are three representative uh, papers on uh, formulation of relativistic MHD. So, uh, so comparing the first one, uh, so in this paper, uh, so uh, the all of uh, transport coefficient are required to be the semi-positive, but we found this is a too strong uh, constraint. We can actually relax the, uh, the, the constraint for thermodynamic stability. And in this paper, um, they uh, derived almost the same set of uh, inequality as ours, but actually we find one redundancy. So we can show that uh, uh, one of uh, inequality can be get rid of from the list of uh, uh, inequalities. And we get the consistent result uh, with uh, this paper. But this paper is based on the phenomenological derivation or uh, entropy current analysis. So our microscopic or statistical method uh, support uh, their uh, derivation. And what remains is uh, actually computation of transport coefficient. So we have many transport coefficient. So th there are three conductivities and seven viscous uh, coefficient. And so uh, we need to compute them uh, from a microscopic theory. And we have done some of them. So in strong magnetic field limit, uh, we computed the uh, parallel component of conductivity and the parallel component of bulk viscosity. Actually, there are only two non-zero uh, components in the strong B limit. However, if you look at the weaker magnetic field, the situation is much more complicated. And the Kenji and the Yoshimasa did a nice work on uh, this uh, conductivity in intermediate uh, regime. So where uh, one needs to include all Randall levels. So that is uh, kind of hard work. And also Hong and Suyong Li computed a shear viscosity in weak field limit. But uh, the other part has, has not been uh, explored. So this is, uh, interesting future work. Okay, uh, so I don't have going to detail. So let me uh, summarize my talk. 
So uh, I discussed the uh, recent uh, reformulation of relativistic MHD. So in the first part, I discussed entropy analysis, uh, which is familiar to us. And in second part, uh, we discussed uh, microscopic derivation based on non-equilibrium statistical method. And uh, uh, we show that the MHD is dynamic, so conserved uh, magnetic field lines. And if you like, you can attribute it to the uh, magnetic one form symmetry in decent language. And also we could, uh, uh, we could uh, verify the second uh, semi-positivity of entropy production uh, within the first order in derivative expansion, thanks to the, our uh, statistical method. Okay, so this is the end of my talk. Thank you for your attention. Thanks, Kuichi, for a very nice talk. We have some time for questions. Please raise your hand. Uh, Francesco, please go ahead. Yeah. Um... I wanted to point out that this uh, the statistical method that you um, described mm -hmm. is uh, it's basically I think it's basically the the Zubarev approach. Sorry, basically what? Basically the Zubarev method. Oh uh, yeah, I think so. Yeah. So if you go back, can you go back to the slide where you show the statistical operator? Which part? Yeah, here. here. Right. No, no. Next here. one. Yes, yes. So, next one. Ne next one. This one. Yeah, this one. Yes. Okay. So the. Yeah. Okay. It's fine. That the. Um, I, I I have a you know the the whole method here, the the Zubarev method in a sense is just assuming as you as you as you did that rho is equal to the local equilibrium operator or local Gibbs in your, uh, in your notation. And then mm -hmm. assuming that this is fixed, then what happens is that if you write it in exponential form, this delta S, you can work it out with the, with the uh, Gauss theorem. Mm -hmm. And then this becomes proportional to the grade. So this becomes an operator proportional to the gradients of the thermodynamic field. Mm -hmm. which is probably what you wrote in the in the second row so in other words uh yes okay so the diff in other words the difference between the present time local equilibrium and the initial time local equilibrium mm -hmm. which is denoted by u in a sense here mm -hmm. can be simply stated as the uh, say integral over the space time region which is swept by the system while while moving by using the Gauss theorem. Mm -hmm. And this leads to uh, the equation of the divergence of the entropy current, which was found by Zubarev and Wirth. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, uh, that, that is. <laughs> yeah, um, may maybe. No, no, but maybe. It, it's, not, it's not for <laughs> MHD, right? Right? Go, sorry? It's not for MHD. No, I agree. I agree. But the method that you, the method that you described, is basically the same. Okay. Uh, I wouldn't uh, object to. <laughs> no, no, I mean, uh, yeah, it, is, it, is ju it is just uh, say, uh, a remark uh, that this. Uh, so the problem of initial uh, local equilibrium and the local equilibrium at updated time is. Uh, is a, is a some uh, known problem okay okay thank you but framework itself is not our point here so if uh, i mean so we wanted to apply to derivation of mhd so i'm fine no, no, I, that, is, that, is, that, that i that i i fully agree i mean this is this is a, a very a very nice idea to apply to apply this method to to uh, mhd Mm -hmm. It's absolutely say uh, needed if you want to include quantum corrections because this is a quantum statistical method from the very beginning. Mm -hmm. So what I am saying is that this method is known. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you for your comment. Oleg, next question, please. 
You mentioned that the difference between the electric and magnetic field is the, that there is screening of electric field and, and absence of the screening for magnetic field. Right. And what would happen in the, say, truly neutral system, I don't know, pi zero or so, when electric field will also will not be screened? I see. Uh, so you are saying if it's not uh, no screening of electric matter, it's not conducting matter, but in this sense, it's just a polarized matter, polarizable yeah. matter. Uh, maybe we need another formulation for that case. May I, uh, so basically, I think you are saying conductivity is zero in your system. In, in some, well, just in some sense. No, no screening, no currents in the sense, yes. Uh -huh. yeah. Can I say something? Yeah. Yeah, go ahead. So if you consider the uh, neutral, only the two, uh, your system is composed of the uh, charge neutral system. Uh, uh, ingredient, uh, there is no coupling between the electromagnetic field and uh, your matter sector, so it is decoupled. Uh -huh. So, so you may have just a free Maxwell evolution just for the uh, electromagnetic sector, and uh, the matter sector uh, behaves as a usual hydrodynamic equation. Ah, so they decouple. Uh, yes, yeah. Elec they electrodynamic. Yeah. And, uh, I, I see. I see. Yeah, yeah, but I see. Uh, what if uh, pi zero is polarizable? Uh, then the, that's another way, it's pol pol polarizability, right? It's not just screening, right? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's something. Uh -huh. I see. Yeah. Okay, uh, Masood, please go ahead. Hi, thanks for the talk. I have a comment about this question, and that is that uh, if you looked at a comment about the question of uh, electric field. Mm -hmm. I mean, you are counting electric field as order of derivative. But mm -hmm. essentially, at the same time, you are assuming that your, uh, if you, from the microscopic uh, picture, if we, we assume a global equilibrium, we can find that uh, this. Uh, uh, the electric field can exist in equilibrium if there is a corresponding chemical potential with non-vanishing. Uh, uh, ah, okay. Uh, sorry, I, I didn't that we are considering neutral uh, plasma in equilibrium. Yeah, you have, you have considered the neutral plasma. Yes. Right. Because in that case, if, if, if the, the, the plasma is not new neutral, you cannot essentially uh, add anything to this. I mean, okay. Thank you. Okay, so uh, now, okay, next question, please. Hello? Now, okay. There, there is a, a message in the chat. Um, the question is through the, the chat. Oh, yeah, because oh okay. So, uh, should I see this? Oh, yes. Uh, uh, okay. So, uh, yes. So, let me read the question. Uh, let's see. Uh, in constructing MHD, you assume the local charge neutrality. Uh, but what happens if one is interested in the time scale comparable to the inverse of the conductivity where charge neutrality is not necessarily satisfied? So, so that means in a shorter time scale where shorter this uh, neutrality is uh, not satisfied, what would happen? I think that's the question. I see, but it's not a strict hydrodynamic, right? So in shorter time scale, or higher energy scale, we could have uh, excitation of electric field. I think that is basically the absence of uh, local neutrality. 
it can be still in the hydro region. Uh, in what sense? So if we look at uh, the order, order one over sigma, then the directive is not completely screened. Right? Can I make a comment? So I think yes. that, yeah, if the coupling constant, QED coupling constant is small enough, the, uh, uh, in that case, that we can think of the uh, uh, electric current source uh, in the right hand side of the Maxwell equation as a, a small uh, uh, compared to the uh, typical, for example, the QCD scale or something. So you can think of the electron uh, Maxwell equation as an approximate conservation law. And in that case, you can think of the uh, uh, electric flux line as an uh, approximate conservation quantity. Uh, so maybe you can uh, think of the, it as a, a kind of the hydro plus formulation. So mm -hmm. you can include it, it but it has the typical time scale, which shows the relaxational behavior. And if you are interested in that time scale, you can, you can, you can include it, I, I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but it, yeah, still it's not the strict hydro limit, but uh, it's something beyond, right? Yeah, it's, yes, yes. Only if you choose a uh, e square zero limit, it will be hydro mode. But uh, so if you have the finite electromagnetic coupling, it will be, yeah, if it is sp small, then we can think of it as an approximate conservative quantity as the actual charge density in QCD. Mm -hmm. Okay. So it's not the hydro line yeah. mode. Yeah, if symmetry break is small, then we can add quasi hydro uh, mode. Okay, so it seems now okay, satisfied. So, yeah. So, I suggest we uh, close the uh, sessions today.